a very good morning all of you so welcome to day 18 of our 21 day challenge so today we have a very interesting information to discuss both general as well as subject wise i hope you guys are all ready hi people harita Juhi, nidhi danish hi a very good morning all of you so welcome to day 18 of a 21 day challenge in today's general discussion. We'll look into the following piece of information or literature from Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Mobs. So in one of the sections, he gives the author, quotes another author who gives a suggestion to all students, especially girl students, according to that author, and let's see what that suggestion or advice is all about, which is related to your exams and nervousness which one feels during giving a particular exam. So my advice to students, especially to girl students, would be somewhat similar, just as a bicycle chain may be too tight. So, uh, so may one's carefulness and conscientiousness be so tense as to hinder the running of one's mind. Take, for example, periods when there are many successive days of examination impending. One ounce of good nervous tone in an examination is worth many pounds of anxious study for it in advance. If you want really to do your best in an examination, fling away the book the day before, say to yourself, I won't waste another minute on this miserable thing and I don't care an iota whether I succeed or not. Say this sincerely and feel it and go out and play or go to bed and sleep and I'm sure the results next day will encourage you to use the method permanently. William James on vital results. So this is something which is very relevant especially to all students who are preparing for uh, not just competitive exams, even the basic exams, because uh, these, are, uh, these exams are given so much of importance that it's a matter of life and death for almost each and every student in this country. So it's like, if you don't do good, if you fail, that's it, your career is over. See, that kind of stress, that kind of perception leads to bouts and bouts of anxious study throughout your preparation phase, which makes learning process very frustrating. And that's the reason why most of the students uh, tend to struggle or tend to give their best on the day of exam. And Viva Voice is the best example, as we discussed a number of times prior, even if you know the subject, because of stress, because of anxiety, because of some kind of anticipation, uh, students tend to falter on the day of exam. So, if you have, if you consciously tell yourself that uh, it doesn't matter, let me give my best. And that kind of perception allows you to have peaceful days during your preparation phase. And most importantly, you will have fun learning new things, many things, relevant things, uh, which will help you not just personally or not just professionally, both personally as well as professionally, isn't it? So if you look into the middle uh, statement, one ounce of good nervous tone in an examination is worth many pounds of anger study for it in advance. If that's the case, as I said, we feel frustrated and it's better not to study that way, in my opinion. It's better not to have the kind of anger study as it only further impedes your progress. So instead, just especially before the exam, uh, don't keep uh, studying till the last moment, as it serves no purpose at all. Uh, instead, instead, you know, it tries to increase our anxious levels and we often make mistakes as a consequence. And I'm sure you all can experience or you, you can all, uh, you know, just imagine how the consequences are going to be based on your given personal experiences, right? So with this, let's move on to our academic part. Before we move on, who introduced the term virus? Who introduced the term vaccination? 
who is considered as father of immunization. So we'll look into that now. Very interesting information. It's about a man who changed the course of human history through his efforts in immunology. Today we'll learn or see the biography of Jenner Edward in brief, especially uh, pertaining to his contributions to immunology or medical sciences. So Edward Jenner, 1749 to 1823, English physician. And before I start, I want you to remember the date, May 8, 1978. So what's the significance of this date? We'll get back to that. May 8, 1978. So Edward Jenner discovered the process of vaccination when he found that injection uh, with cowpox protected against smallpox. His method of immunization via vaccination ushered in the new science of immunology. And also later uh, with the efforts of Louis Pasteur and so many other scientists. Jenner was born in Berkeley, England, the third son and youngest of six children of Stephen Jenner, a clergyman of the Church of England. He was orphaned at age five and was raised by his older sister who was married to a clergyman. When Jenner was 13 years old, he was apprenticed to a surgeon. Then in 1770, he moved to London, England to work with John Hunter, an eminent Scottish anatomist and surgeon who encouraged Jenner to be inquisitive and experimental in his approach to medicine. Imagine a guy doing internship at the age of 13 years. Obviously, it, it will have a tremendous impact. Jenner returned to Berkeley in 1773 and set up practice as a country doctor. Uh, official degrees, uh, come on, keep them aside. Uh, look at this guy. During and prior to Jenner's lifetime, Smallpox was a common and often fatal disease worldwide. Many centuries before Jenner's time, the Chinese had begun the practice of blowing flakes from smallpox cabs up the nostrils of healthy persons to confer immunity to disease. By 17th century, the Turks and Greeks had discovered that when injected into the skin of healthy individuals, the serum from smallpox pustule induced a mild case of uh, disease and subsequent immunity. And that's what we're seeing right now in the, I mean, the current pandemic. I mean, it cannot be more relevant. Thanks to efforts of all these people. This practice of inoculation termed variolation reached England by 18th century. However, it was quite risky as those who were inoculated frequently suffered a severe or fatal case of smallpox. Despite the risk, people willingly agreed to inoculation because of widespread incidence of smallpox and the fear of suffering from terribly disfiguring poke marks that resulted from the disease. In fact, uh, our generation or the previous generation, have, maybe previous generation, but our generation haven't come across these clinical images of smallpox very often because the disease has been eliminated. Remember the date. As a young physician, Jenner noted that dairy workers who had been exposed to cowpox, a disease like smallpox, only milder, seemed uh, immune to more severe infection. He continually put forth his theory that cowpox could be used to prevent smallpox, but his contemporaries shunned his ideas. They maintained that they had seen smallpox victims who claimed to have had earlier cases of cowpox does not agreeing to what Jenner is trying to say or put forth. It became Jenner's task to transform a country superstition into an accepted medical practice. We're talking about Britain. For up until the mid 1770s, the only documented cases of vaccinations using cowpox came from farmers such as Benjamin Justy of Dorshire who vaccinated his family with cowpox using a darning needle. After observing cases of cowpox and smallpox for over a quarter century, it's not instantaneous, it's lifetime efforts. So over a quarter century, Jenner took a step that could have branded him as a criminal as easily as a hero. 
the line seems to be very thin. On May 14th, 1796, he removed the fluid from a cowpox lesion from dairy maid Sarah Nelms and inoculated James Phillips, an eight-year-old boy who soon came down with cowpox. Six weeks later, he inoculated the boy with smallpox. The boy remained healthy. So this is the illustration which is presented in World of Microbiology and Immunology textbook. Edward Jenner inoculating the boy with cowpox virus as a protection against smallpox virus. We'll get back to this again. So Jenner had proved his theory. He called his method vaccination using the Latin word vacca, vacca meaning cow, vaccine meaning cowpox. That's a term which we are using even now, 21st century. He also introduced the word virus, right? So father of immunology is often considered as father of immunology, person who turned or used the term vaccination or introduced the term virus is Edward Jenner. The publication of Jenner's an inquiry into the causes and effects of variola vaccine. Variola vaccine is set off an enthusiastic demand for vaccination throughout Europe. Within 18 months, the number of deaths from smallpox had dropped by two thirds in England after 12,000 people were vaccinated. By 1800, over 1 lakh people had been vaccinated worldwide. As the demand for vaccine rapidly increased, Jenner discovered that he could take lymph from a smallpox tube and dry it in a glass tube for use up to three months later. The vaccine could then be transported. Again, thanks to this uh, observation. So Edward Jenner inoculating boy with cowpox virus as a protection against smallpox. A wonderful illustration. Jenner was honored and respected throughout Europe and the United States, except at his own, back in home. At his request, Napoleon released several Englishmen who had been jailed in France in 1804, while France and Great Britain were at war across the Atlantic Ocean. So this guy could even, uh, you know, influence the leaders thanks to his uh, uh, discovery. So at his request, Napoleon released several Englishmen who had been jailed in France in 1804, while France and Great Britain were at war across the Atlantic Ocean. Thomas Jefferson received the vaccine from Jenner and proceeded to vaccinate his family and neighbors at Monticello. Yeah. However, in his native England, Jenner's medical colleagues refused to allow him entry into the College of Physicians in London, insisting that he first pass a test on theories of Hippocrates and Gall, official degrees degree on paper. So Jenner refused to bow to their demands, saying his accomplishments in conquering smallpox should have qualified him for election. Uh, in the modern day, they would call him or her a quack. He was never elected to college. Jenner continued his medical practice, as well as collecting fossils and propagating hybrid plants in his garden until his death from a stroke at age of 73. Nearly two centuries after Jenner's experimental vaccination of young James, the WHO, World Health Organization, declared endemic smallpox to be eradicated, endemic. And the date was May 8, 1978, right? And also uh, in commemoration or in memory of uh, Edward Jenner, we have the following stamps released on different occasions. As you can see from left, Edward Jenner stamp, French territory of Afar and Isas. And in 1973 and in 2004, Jenner with smallpox virus, 350 years of Royal Society stamp. And then in 1999, Edward Jenner Millennium Series stamp. And 200, is it 2000? Okay, Spanish Bombers Expedition for Vaccination stamp. And 1978, the year which we were discussing, eradication of smallpox in the world stamp, United Nations. So you can clearly see that these things were not instantaneous. They were not happening instantaneously. Jenner had uh, allotted almost his entire lifetime, uh, observed over a quarter of a century, which is not a joke, 
to note down his observations and start practicing accordingly. And then after his uh, discovery, it took the world, the humans, two centuries, two centuries literally, to eradicate smallpox from the world. So there are certain things which take time, but there are a few things which take very long time, but maybe it's worth it. So this is some information about Edward Jenner and his contributions to immunology, vaccination, and also about his uh, early days, how he was influenced uh, by various other uh, scientists or doctors or physicians of that particular era. And ultimately, based on his observations, how he started using cowpox as a vaccine or as a shield against smallpox. And ultimately, uh, started this vaccination concept and also started transporting them based on his observational skills and uh, based on his enthusiasm. And this is something which has changed the course of human history. Imagine a person's contribution saving thousands and thousands of lives. Does he need a degree on paper? Maybe that's up to the Royal Physician College of London to decide. So anyways, so I hope you enjoyed today's session. And before we conclude, as we discussed prior, the introductory part or the general part, if you are feeling worried or tense, uh, it's only because of the kind of perceptions which you had been having or harboring right from the beginning, thanks to the uh, stupid orientation we all get from different quarters. Just keep the, uh, keep the concept very simple. That is, you're preparing for your own sake. You're giving an exam, uh, not to prove something to someone, but you're giving an exam for your own benefit so that you learn many things in the process and you're being tested uh, based on what you know and understand in a particular entrance. And regardless of your performance or, or regardless of your scores and marks, each and every one of us have the potential to succeed in our own way. And if you think only the first ranker is the happiest person and only the first ranker is a successful person, then it's completely absurd and false. So each and every one of us is unique and special in our own way. The real challenge lies into tapping into our potential. It's all about uh, finding out a passion cultivating a passion and working towards the same. So uh, once you know what your passion is and once you start implementing these three uh, basic mantras, that is hard work, consistency and self-belief, nothing, uh, no one can stop you. So let's conclude this live session and your feedback is always welcome. So for any further queries or clarifications, you can get back to me, proud to be dentist at gmail.com. 24 by 7. So wish you all a great day ahead. Love you all. And just a couple of days to our final day of 21 day challenge. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I, I'm sure this is life transforming. So wish you all the best. Love you all. Have a fantastic day ahead.